Mondo. All right, all right, all right. This is the Raw Report. We're back. I got my main man, producer D, sitting next to me. Say hello to the people, D. Yo, what's up? This Divine. How y'all doing, yo? Oh, that's it's right. New, it's my new voice. Wait, wait, but no, but D is short for Divine. I mean, that's... Oh, yeah, yeah, right. you know. Okay. Yeah, he got knowledge himself, so you can call him Divine D. We you call know. him? Or we talking about shit? Yeah, we talking about, talking about me. Oh, yeah, you oh. talking about him, not me. Whoa. Him is me, <laughs> I and him. All right. Um, we don't, we're not drinking this episode, so this is going to be a very a very serious Raw Report. I actually just drank some hand sanitizer just to get me there. Okay. I don't know if that's going to work. Anyway, Bomb, you know what to do. All right. Starting again for the second time. You used to do a beat, though. You used to do a real I beat. Did, now but, you but, just bang on to that. Yeah, real, we got a real theme song. Oh, yeah, now. okay. So, all anyway, right. so, so, D, so where, where should we start? It's a lot going on in the world, so um, it's heavy out there, man. It's heavy. I mean, you can start with, we can start with the CDC, new rules for New York. To, you know, Ooh. you got to uh, be vaccinated to come in restaurants, Ooh. and you got to show proof. How do you guys feel about it? Vaccinated ID. I mean, to me... This is almost playing out like a, a real life conspiracy theory from like, you know, the millennium 2010. No, real rap. Or, real rap. or this is almost like something from like the Bible where you have to have this special ID or you won't be allowed to enter places. It's almost like, I mean, I feel like this may be like some kind of mark of the beast. I mean, if for, for my religious people out there, hey. I mean, this is really deep. And I know a lot of Christians who are very devout Christians who have gotten the vaccine you know, in order to be able to participate in regular society. And, I mean, I, Christians out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but, I mean, this does play out kind of like an um, a, a in-game scenario in Revelations. You know what I mean? But, but the mass mandate, though, I mean, do you think it's necessary? I mean, as long as the numbers say that we're increasing in, 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 in COVID-positive cases, I think that a business should be able to make their own rules. I think that, like, for instance, we're in a studio now. This studio says you have to be masked up or, you know, I don't want you to, I, you know. For, for, instance, for instance, at, at work, I'm not allowed to go in the, in, in the building unless I am COVID, have COVID-19. My COVID-19 symptoms are not showing. I, I can't have a temperature. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't be out the country in the last 14 days. This is protocol for me to go to an office. So I don't know what protocol they have set up here, but that's for that building. And I think it should be individualized. People should have have the choice to, to, to make their own rules. And if these restaurants in New York I think it should be like it shouldn't be the CDC. It should be the based on the, what the, res, the the restaurant owners want. Right? right, right, right. But I mean, if you did want to put a state mandate in, Tillman Fertitta said something crazy that earlier. He was like, "Look, if you're gonna put state mandates in," he said that he agreed with you. Did he said, "Listen." Let me make my own rules. But the state mandates wouldn't they make more sense if this was? Um, on public transportation. He said because the train is where it is a mega spreader. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. The bus is a mega spreader. So, of course, if you want to ride public transportation or participate in any government building, the mask mandate should be in place. But to me, my whole thing is, I mean, do people really want to see this shit go away? And the, the, the truth of the matter is COVID is here to stay for at least a couple more years, like a few more years. I mean, like this, this shit is not going away no time soon. And and like he said something else deep. Uh, Tillman Fertitta, shout out Tillman. He's a re he's a real one. You know what I'm saying? He said we're only at Delta. We still got the whole alphabet to go. Yeah. As far as variants, you know what I mean. So yeah, I mean, the true. variant shit is deep, man. I mean, in Fauci. I mean, when it really came down to it, he gave everybody a bunch of misinformation. And, you know, he was making big faces in front of Trump and expressions and all this other stuff that he was doing. You know, it, it kind of was like a, a, a setup from the whole beginning. Uh, if he's the one that funded the whole Wuhan H1N1, you know, data to try to learn more about these diseases, but wind up creating one that's going to take out the whole entire fucking planet. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the deep part, because if you got you had Agenda 21 going on for 60 years, probably more than that. I'm not familiar I mean? with Agenda 21, D. You don't remember Agenda 21? Is that from Millennium 2000? Yeah, that's from. Let's talk right, about right, the. Okay, um, got it, got it. 
the uh, you know the population control and trying to you know uh, conspiracy theorists yeah, trying, okay, to, trying okay. to lower the population control. And look, I'm not a conspiracy theorist for a lot of reasons because to me, it's already so much shit on the top layer that I don't even got to go digging for shit. You know what I'm saying? No, it's, absolutely. It's, it's so, the cake is so fucked up that the icing is fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm just looking at the icing like, damn, why? Who the fuck would eat that cake? You know what I'm saying? I I just, I just think with. After going through this first process with with COVID, now you see exactly what's going to be done for the next, uh, you know, man-made disease. Like, I, I want the research to go into why man was in a lab fucking with the coronavirus. They were trying to learn about it. Yeah, but we, we already knew about it. it <laughs> we it, didn't it, know it, enough. It, 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 it never now jumped, we're learning, boy. <laughs> it never jumped from, a, from an animal to a human, and we share lakes and ponds and... Since since the beginning of time, why is this all of a sudden, all of a sudden um, jumping now? Jumping now, it's because yeah. somebody it's like diabolical. They it's like it. it's like Lex Luthor or something, like you know, or just Doctor Fauci. Uh, Doctor yeah, Fauci, yeah, Doctor Fauci is Lex Luthor. I would rather well, Doctor Fauci is nothing like Lex Luthor. <laughs> He's is. not. No, no. He's In not. fact, uh, I've never as, heard of Fauci until the Lex three Luthor years fan ago. club. If Fauci even tried to join, they would come to me. I ask you, okay. Right, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a big sense. fan of Lex Luthor. Huge fan of Lex Luthor. You know what I'm saying? I, I like Lex Luthor more than Superman. You know I know. I, mean? I remember you, you, you talking about a scene yeah, uh, that made uh, you... That made, made me fall in love with the yeah, character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell, let's tell us about this scene. This, you know. I mean, you know, it's just a scene in uh, Superman 2 where, uh, where Lex Luthor actually makes a deal a side deal with alien megalords to turn over the son of jor to them, and all he wants in return is Australia. So he's, and because he says Australia is beachfront property, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's beautifully written, whoever wrote this shit, you know what I mean? So, so Luther, he winds up, of course the deal never goes through, Superman wins in the end, but Luther tries to act like, he was with Superman the whole time once <laughs> Superman wins. And he's like, Superman, ha, they fell for our trap. And Superman's like, cut it out, Luther. I'm not falling for your bullshit. I mean, so, I mean, it's just a very funny slapstick character. But Fauci, you know, he played very serious. And it was all about the science. And then it was all about masks. And you got to wear a mask. And then it came out, well, wear the mask if the mask makes you feel better. Oh, and then uh, a couple people what? would get vaccinated. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get, create her herd immunity. immunity. Yeah. yeah. That never happened. Yeah, and mean, it's just like, so obviously you guys spent millions or trillions of whoever billions of dollars on this coronavirus, and now you fucking created this uh, germ monster that's actually, I mean, it could fucking end us all. I mean, if we don't really play careful with this with this thing. And, you know, and people are getting vaccinated because it's important. Like, jobs are telling people, like, hey, you can't come to work um, if you're not going to get vaccinated. But I just read something earlier today that... Some people are saying, yo, fuck the money. I'd rather stay home anyway. So I'll take a pay cut to stay home from the office. So, I mean, what, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, there's a lot of people who's not at work right now. I know the mental health field has lost a lot of people. Right. Um, right. People not people taking care of people. I mean, I, I'm about to get a little deep here, but it's people that's in charge of um, taking care of somebody's life and inside of a, 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 a you know a healthcare facility or some type of Private community based care, yeah. uh, uh, um, home, care. home care. And these people are getting paid fourteen and fifteen dollars an hour. Now, why would I work fourteen, fifteen dollars an hour and I'm in charge of someone's life? When I can go to Target or Walmart and get paid sixteen, seventeen dollars an hour and just to be charged of an hour. I mean, you, how about this? You know, one of my <laughs> one of my friends told me they drive an Uber and they about to quit their job just based off Uber and Lyft. They're like, look, yeah. I can make three to five hundred dollars every day driving Uber and Lyft, and I'm just like, yo, that's just nuts. So, I, I actually, I, we got a guest on hold, and I, I want to bring him in. This is this is our first first guest, wow. first guest on the show. Welcome, first guest. It's my pleasure to be here. Hello, everybody. Hey, we got Gregory Walker from the Brothers Network. And Greg, would you tell us a little bit about the Brothers Network while we bring you in on this? Sure, but I do want to say that I'm, I'm on in a bul multiple capacities today. My first job and my first career in New York City was I oversaw uh, a public health program at Bellevue Hospital, the largest provider of services to infant people in the country, and I oversaw tuberculosis control. So I want to acknowledge that as we begin this conversation, and I'll tell you about how public health and uh, public programs intersect in what we do. 
The Brothers Network is the only organization in this country and perhaps the world who brings together artists, intellectuals, thinkers, and playwrights to amplify positive stories for and about black men. Everyone's welcome to participate, but if you go to our website, you'll see it's www.thebrothersnetwork.art, A-R-T. It's a high-level domain name. Again, it's www.thebrothersnetwork.art. Uh, we've had the pleasure of producing plays. Some of those plays are now ending up on Broadway, so we're really excited about that in New York, and we'll bring that to your conversation around COVID and people's safety and also income and um, who's making money and where and how. I mean, look, that's, um, that's exactly where we're at. So, look, so, Greg, I love what you're doing with the Brothers Network. You know, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second. Do you think Negroes can act? What I think, I think that I think that not only Negroes but also <laughs> Black men and men of the African diaspora can act their asses off. I'm just I'm just teasing you, Greg, because you we've know been doing, we've been doing it for so long, we, right? We, I we, mean, we invented act. it, you know what I mean? But <laughs> in any case, you know, we don't get the credit for it, you know what I mean? We got right. and you, we got to pump you up because you're not only an actor but you're also a writer, a director, and a producer. Because you know, so you know about multiple platforms and being multi-talented, right? Yeah, I got I got some good I got some okay. good artists in, in our camp that are very talented and you know, we we're, we're definitely looking to do a collaboration with the Brothers Network. But it is but, our but pleasure. Greg, but what but why, I'm glad to have you here, but we're we're right smack dead in the middle of talking about COVID and why the government was funding COVID uh trials and you know, uh and tweaking the virus in, in Wuhan, China, and play possum the whole time. So we're just trying to figure out, like, what, what what's going on with this? And I, I figured yeah. you'd have a good perspective. I do have a perspective, and I'm unclear about if someone was playing uh, games in a, in a virus, a virus, virus, or changing the virus, or or doing any of those things like that. I think that um, things, some things are man-made, and certainly some, some things are organic. I think we can make the same argument about tuberculosis, and we could say that somebody tweaks tuberculosis, which is not true, to make it multi-drug resistant. This is not true. We could say the same thing about HIV AIDS, but that's also not true because that's incurable, yeah. right? We could say those things. You know, I'm old enough to remember when people of Haitian descent and people who were ha from Haiti were thought to be the exclusive carriers of, of, of uh, HIV AIDS, and that's a terrible thing. That's a terrible narrative. And then that moved on to say that just homosexuals just for people who were exchanging HIV, and then it was drug users. But the fact of the matter around HIV AIDS, like any other disease, is that anybody can get it who's sexually active. Anybody, no matter what they're doing, hetero, homo, trans, anybody is at risk. And so I think the same is true for um, COVID. We have to be mindful and protect ourselves. I certainly am not smart enough to talk about any plague or any disease or the Black Plague, you know, I can say, though, that every hundred or so years, the world has a global plague. COVID is not new. Tuberculosis in the past, the Black Plague in the past. So, you know, we live here in this moment, but when we understand history and we understand the history of disease, we know this isn't really new. Um, your producer made an interesting comment about working for a, which was a great plug for those those big box retail stores yeah. versus doing doing home care. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and I think, you know, you know, we have to have jobs and we have to live and we have to have health insurance, you know. But I wonder about the Uber driver, since we use that example, will he have health insurance if he leaves his job at, say, working at a hospital, right? Well, I here's the thing. If, if he's making, if if he's making three insurance. times his salary, well, and then he still has the leisure of, you know, doing whatever he wants to do, I think that's kind of like the trade off. Well, I mean, one, one might argue that, but, you know, at his job at, say, you know, whatever, Company X, he did have health insurance. And he also perhaps had long-term disability, right? So we have to look in the future about our earnings and what's important for us vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, living a nice life, right? And so both and. We can't just assume that because we make $300 a day that everything's fine. But yeah. if, you have no, um, if you have no health insurance... Yeah, then you have to spend money on health insurance, and one visit can have you in the one visit yeah. to the hospital can, can 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 make you broke again. 
Right. Yeah. I'm right. just saying, yeah. without right. insurance. But yeah, I mean, there's, right. there's government health care. There's other subsidized things that people can apply for who are living on a gig economy. Uh, and then, you know, life is, you know, people live their life the way they want to live their life. I can't right. judge a man right. by, you know, if hey, hey, if you want to chew bubble gum all day long. No, and, that's you know, a side business, though. I mean, I think Uber I think it's is a good, it's side, a good side. side. I, I think Absolutely. That, you know, we have to be mindful, though, when, when, you know, I'm an economist by training. That's what I studied in college. And okay. so I have to look at, I have to look at it. You know, from 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 an economic perspective, you know, is the Uber driver going to do because he's uninsured? Is he going to get all the vaccinations he possibly could? Or is he going to get all the health care preventive things that he possibly could? Right. Or is he yeah. just going to worry about making that three hundred dollars a day? And I argue that I don't know what they're going to do. Right. I have no idea what people are going to do. People are incentivized differently. Yeah. You know, exactly. I, there you go. Whatever yeah, his incentives are is how he'll right. act in life. And, like, right. you know, I wish him the best, you know what I'm saying, mm. no matter in, in all his right. endeavors. Yeah, he's Uber, a hypothetical person. He's yeah. a hypothetical person, so it yeah, could be a woman yeah. for all we know. Right? Yeah, exactly. So we, we, yeah. We never, we'll never know. But, but what hey, I Brett, do want to make, make clear is before we move on, though, I do want people to be mindful about, um, one, what they say here on the podcast, and also if wearing the mask, if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for everybody else around you. If you don't want to get the vaccination, tell other people to get the vaccination so there's less of a spread of the disease. I just want to argue and share with you in this process that I've had my third vaccination. I got my first in January, my second in February, and last week I got my third COVID vaccination. Because so, so I why did you ready. get three? Yeah, I is, is the third because is that what, was that the booster shot that I'm hearing about? That's the booster shot. That's correct. Okay. And All so right. I got the three because I want to be extra protected from the individuals who may or may not have access to health care and or who may not have access or know where to get the free COVID shot. Or just not have good sense. You know what I mean? So you want to protect yourself from that. those guys. I, I, didn't, I didn't say that. The people who just, well, sorry, the people are just total knuckleheads and refuse yeah. to play by the rules. Yeah, but that's that's yeah. one of the reasons why states like Florida have high rates. Oh, yeah, Florida and, was off and, the chain and, from and, the uh, gate. And, They've uh, been off the and, chain. Um, and, like, when we was in Vegas, nobody wore a mask. And I was like, yo, this is, I feel like this is not right. Like, I just, like, I was wearing mm -hmm. my mask. Like, I'm like, why ain't people wearing a mask? I mean, and they you know, gave... Guess what? Guess what? Those people from Florida... And Las Vegas, they come to Philadelphia. Yeah, I know. They're from all over. That, that, that's, that's, that's the point. Yeah, yeah it's a big, a big melting point. pot of COVID. Hey, Greg, you touched, you touched on something earlier that I, that I want to actually go back to uh, when yes, we're sir. talking about COVID. And, and then because it's, it's a very serious topic and it's a hot button topic now. But, you know, you talked about HIV. And, you know, the first... <clears throat> the first times you boarded up, the the few people that you mentioned that were like responsible or the targets of it, and even uh, they were all minorities, and and I think that that's an interesting point to to bring that up. And then I wanted to ask you, um, you know, why you think that everybody has baby? attacked the baby this week oh, over his HIV baby. comments, and, oh, and, is there, and is there a way for him to come back from that? He had HIV com. Comments are homophobic comments. Yeah. I mean, he both. had both. both. Okay, he both. both. Okay, all right. You know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah. oh, well, well, I don't think he. I don't think he implied that gay people spread AIDS, and I think that. So I mean, to, I think I, he very much. I think he very much did imply that. I well, think he very much did imply I'm, that. I'm unclear about that. He said some crazy stuff. He said some crazy stuff. He said people that suck. Okay, uh, he say said it? that somebody. He said, "Put your hands up if you don't have HIV." All the girls. That's what he said. All the girls in the house, put your hands up if you don't have HIV. And then he said, and all the guys, put your hands up if you wasn't sucking dick out in the parking lot a few right. minutes ago. Right. So you want me to comment? Up. You want me to comment? So I want to comment. Okay. One, uh, HIV, AIDS is, HIV is a sexually transmitted disease. So women can give it to men. Women can give HIV to men. Women can give chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, and HIV to men. So that's the first thing we have to dismantle and debunk. Women can give HIV to men. And that's how most men, quite frankly, get HIV. It is not from some sort of down low activity. It is from yeah. a female that they've gotten it. And the other part I want to acknowledge is that um, I'm going to go really out of my comfort zone here. There's a misguided notion about homosexuality, and it's that um, only the person who's sucking the dick is gay. The person who's getting the suck, well, yeah. Getting his dick well, that's jailhouse rules. 
You it's know, all, it's, all, from, it's, 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 all, it's the right? old school jail joke where he said, I that's knew right. that guy was gay when I let him suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's the old school jail joke. You know what I mean? I, I've never been to prison, so, you know. I, I've never been to jail. I, well, I've, been I've to never jail, been gay. I've never been to prison. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. But, but the question is, did you let another guy suck your dick? And if you did, then you're homosexual. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Right? I would agree with that as homosexual <laughs> behavior. Yikes. So, so there's a misguided notion about who is homosexual and who is not homosexual and what is a homosexual act because there's two men doing it and if it's sexual that's a homosexual act so yeah. I love to dismantle and debunk those myths and misconceptions about yes. sex and sexuality as it regard to uh to, to, to men. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to have you on here because I knew you have a different perspective. But my question is, Greg, how, how do you think the baby comes back from this? Can, do you think, think he can come back I, from this? And do you think, and my, this is actually a two-part question, do you think that he's being severely attacked by this, not only because what he said was totally outlandish and totally ridiculous, but that he's also black and he's an easy I target? That, I think that the baby it's brilliant on the perspective that now we're talking about him this week and we were not talking about him four weeks ago. But he's canceled. We can well, talk about him all No, no, he's canceled it's, from a couple events. He's not canceled. That's hard. Yes, 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 yes that's big hard, events. No, we're, we're talking about it and like R. Kelly, I hate to go there. I hate to go there. Wow. Right? I hate to go there. But R. Kelly, you know, was invited to Spelman, an all-girls school, at the time that these allegations were made where he was peeing on young girls. And yet Spelman... Wow. They brought a in crackhead Atlanta. into a crack house. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I mean, in, in the know, a um, prestigious, a prestigious. I'm answering the question. A prestigious all women's black all women's college, you know, known for its um, the best crack. Around. The best so, crack so we got. I say, I say, you know, do I think the baby will be able to come back? I think that what's amazing about living in this modern time is that things people forget very quickly. And I think okay. that baby will come back if his music is good and people enjoy him. And I certainly think that they do. I think that in another two years, people will be at the baby concerts right. and buy, right. buy, buying and downloading his music. Right. You know, well, I, I, also, I, I, I hope, hope he comes out of this. I, yeah, I hope I hope you're right, Greg. And I hope he comes yeah. out of this stronger. And I hope he comes out of this wise. But I also think the baby is wise because right now Lil Nas X is really hot. And if you say anything disparaging or related to you know Lil Nas X, you're going to blow up too. Well, did he say something about Lil Nas X? I think Lil Boosie made some comments about Lil Nas X. And, you know, I made some comments about Lil Nas X too, Greg. And, you know, my, my <laughs> thing is... I, I'm just confused the why his name is Little Nas. I mean, that's just why. why. You know, X. because what, and then X at the end of it. To me, it's mm -hmm. just, it, the, Nas means something so different to mm -hmm. hip hop, and Nas's voice is just, mm -hmm. again, I can say different, than, right. and so different from yeah. a Little Nas that it almost feels like to, to be able to call yourself Little Nas. There should be some borrowed technique, style, mm. uh, some kind of fabric. Because when you, th I mean, mm. Nas was invited to the the president's house course, for of dinner course. Of course. because of lyrical of content and, the, right. and and talking about the fabric of African Americans in mm -hmm. a way that is is mm -hmm. unique to him but not unique to the souls of African-Americans when you hear Nas. So, and then the X part is also confusing to me because it comes from a religious uh, 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 background, you know, of the nation of Islam, which is also very, very different from little Nas X. So that's just the part that just confuses me. And I, and I remember rappers would have to change their names uh, if they had any similarity to another rapper based off of no. just uh, respect level or just using someone else's name was just taboo. It was like, well, why would you call yourself someone else's name? And, 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 and But this is a whole different era, and I understand. But and then well, I, it, I'd, like to, I'd like to have my, my rap name be Lil Dice Raw X. You think you're going to be able to? <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know I'd what I'm like saying? Nice but, 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 I, but I, you know, I, I like to think that my lyrics mean as much to the African American community as Nas's does, but I don't I think agree. it does. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, and you know what's I, so I funny? You know what's so funny? My name, uh, after I've become 
you know, an artist or an entertainer or whatever I do, you know, professionally is already like some kind of slang for like some kind of sexual act. Like they be like, yo, they be like, yo, no, they be like, yo, dice raw me, or they, oh, I'm dicing it raw or something like that. Like I don't know, I don't know what it means. What was I you watching like when you heard these statements? Sense. No, it's on Twitter. Like, oh, if you, okay, if okay, ever, okay. Like, if you ever just search my name in Twitter, like all kind of things come up, like recipes. You know what I'm saying? Like song. They're like, please dice. They're like dice raw eight onions. You know, they're dice eight raw onions. Like I mean, you know, whatever the well, fuck. Well, you know well, what well, let me let me be clear. Let me make it. Let me adjust my statement. I only. Want want to be a little dice raw x if it's a good term i only want to be little dice raw x if it's a good <laughs> Look, and i'm not saying term. little nas x is bad what i'm saying is it's just so different from what yeah. big nas x used to sure. do you know what i'm saying right. and oh, of, of, the real nas. of the of the oh, real nas or, or so we, or so we, or so we think, right? Or so, or so well, we well, think. No, no. I mean, I, I would definitely say that Little Nas X lyrical content is widely different from Big Nas. You know what I'm saying? I was making a, I was making a sexual I, joke. I understand. I understand. But, but with Nas, we got to be very careful. He's one of our right. world's geniuses. And, and, no and, doubt. and listen, and to come up with Old Town Road, I mean, I like to see what he comes up with next. You know what I'm saying? But that was a well, genius record. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean and I that was two years ago, day, wasn't it? Whatever it was, it was genius. Day. I wish I wrote that shit. Yeah, well, that's right. Motherfucking yeah, Old right. Town Road. God damn it, I'd be <laughs> fucking right. rich as fuck. I know, that's right. But, you know, I think that what we know about music, and certainly um, we know that it changes and evolves, and we know that music and how people hear it and perceive it changes generation after generation. Right, There's an right. incredible movie out, uh, and I'm going to nod to it just because I want to, want to uh, from your colleague, um, The Soul of Summer, uh, The Summer of Soul. You know, oh, yeah, Quest Love. Oh, my gosh, that is one of the most profound films that I've seen about music or anything in decades. It's beautiful. And I, I think about how that film has sustained over the 30, 40 years in which it was initially, those acts were initially done. And I wonder about how Lil Nas X and Lil Dice Raw X and Dice Raw and Nas will play 40 years into the future. Well, I can't speak for the rest of those guys, but I can speak for the Dice Raw the, the music that I make is definitely, when I die, that's when people are really going to be like, fuck, he was a genius. They, but, they, but, but I won't get a chance to reap any of the benefits because I'll be dead. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, like one of those old jazz guys. I'm like a fucking uh, Charlie Parker or some shit or rap. You know what I'm saying? They won't give me no props until I'm fucking blowing my last, my last trumpet note. That's exactly how I feel as the founder and global creative director of the Brothers Network. That's exactly how I feel. Hey, so, Greg, my, my, you know, my thing is, when Eminem made his comments, though, about the baby, uh, before we even move forward, what did I just say? The the baby. I mean, did I, I didn't even right? know the Eminem baby. made comments. I'm the trying baby. to get to that. Well, no, Eminem made mad homosexual, homophobic comments. Oh, yeah, uh, him and Elton John came together. And, but yeah. Him and Elton John walked out on stage. Now, Elton John has recently even chimed in on the baby. No, yes. And he's like, yo, the baby, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, cut that shit out. And, you know, me, again, I'm just trying to figure out how, how does he walk it back? You know what I mean? I, I know he's yeah, going to walk think, it back. I think for right now, people have, you know, thrown the baby out with the bath water. That's yeah, my bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> the trash they truck throw water. The baby, the baby out, out with the bath with water. The bath water. <laughs> yeah. And, so, you know, so it's I, unclear. I, it's unclear if he'll be able to come back. Certainly, I am not uh, a follower of... He a will be back. Friend. Yeah, I think the baby and, will be back. You know but what that's, what, I'm, that's I'm what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. I but, mean, I, but, I, but And I'm glad that you're rooting for him, too. And um, Because, you know, there's not a lot of jobs out here you know, right. for, and, for, for young African-American brothers yeah. who are and, used and to making piece, $11 million a that, year. You know what I mean? Yeah, all right, exactly. You know, we don't want to have one of those drivers drive an Uber or something. But no, what, I, don't want what to see I, the, I don't want to see the baby in an Uber. I want to see yeah, him. The, the baby Uber will be off him, the chain. I want to see him in a 22, 2020, <laughs> what is it, a 2022 Bentley or some shit. I can whatever see the, 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 uh, the baby driving yeah, a Bentley it's bus a really good, and it's a really good up. It's a really good learning opportunity for the larger world. I think that's good. And I think maybe God used the baby as a catalyst to educate other people and to bring awareness to that. Who knew the baby would be doing all that? Okay. Right, right, right. I want to know who the baby father. Well, he's he's definitely yeah. He definitely raised he's definitely raised awareness 
and and I think it's yeah. on a lot of people's radar to educate themselves about that, and yeah. you know, and, and you see what happens moving forward. You know what I mean? But I'm rooting for. I think him. I think that what yeah. the biggest thing is that we now know that the 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 man who is uh, I, I'm on radio, so I can do it. The man who's getting his dick sucked out in the parking lot is also homosexual, right? Not only the sucker, but the sucky is also. Person getting their dick sucked is also homosexual. Yeah, and I well, think that's I, I don't think there. he clarified that part, Greg. But, I, I'm uh, clarifying it. I'm clarifying it because that's <laughs> what we have to. You know, the dude who's getting his yeah. dick sucked is also homosexual, right? He is also homosexual. Usually, I don't talk this candidly, but you bring it out and no, be nice. No, it's all good, man. Look, I, hey, you know I brought you on here to, to, to bring a different perspective, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and I, and I, I think it's cool, man. And, uh, you know, I, I yeah. love you to death. You know what I mean? So I love you too, man. I respect your work and I respect your talent. Yeah, uh, man. And, I, and, and I love the brothers' did. network and and the work that you do. I mean, it shines light on on these type of narratives. Uh, uh, squashing those things that, you know, every black man right. is just this big, you know, b- scary right. guy who's trying to scare you out of, you know, mm-hmm. your daughter's kitty cat. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> and, and, right. and they're, we're multifaceted. Yeah. We're yeah. playwriters. We're directors. We're producers. We run That's nonprofit right. organizations That's for right. years. That's right. We're, you That's know, right. e- we're economic, you know, e- you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're all of that and more. And sometimes we're even the president of the United States. Right. And, and we so, will. And we will do a <laughs> drive by. You know what I'm saying? We're that multifaceted. We're amazing. We're amazing motherfuckers. We came from slavery and became astronauts. Well, and, well, 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 I guess I'll be there. I, I didn't come from slavery and you didn't either. Yeah, well, I, no, I, no. Actually, I, my I, grandfather I picked cotton. My grandfather used to pick cotton with his own I'm hands. I'm descendants like you are of kings and queens. In the continent of Africa. Well, 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 exactly. Look, and we can even we could jump into that in a little later because I want to come and back to that. Yeah. Be- and my great 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 grandfather was a lawyer in in the continent of, of Africa, and then he was right. stolen. Right. Right. He was I was going to give you the full scope that. of my grandpa too. He did big he did big <laughs> things. But to your point, we could even yeah, jump into we could even jump into the whole point where. Our parents and grandparents, you know, used to tell us stories like, hey, you were king, you are king, mm-hmm. you come from royalty, and you were like, yeah. And then you would go to school, and, you know, and I went to school with white kids and Latin kids, mm-hmm. so I would go to school, and they would be like, yo, man, you from the ghetto. How, how does it feel to be from the ghetto? And um, and I'd be like, well, I'm a king and queen. And they were like, no the <laughs> fuck you ain't. And, and, I, and I'd be like, damn. Did, did Nana just lie to me? Well, she you were, you were, they were right, though. You weren't a king and a queen. You were just a king. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. you get it. You know what I'm saying? Just a king. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe you were royal. A queen. You were royal. You yeah, were I, I was royal is the king. point. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, you know. But the story of Prince Whipple. Are you familiar with this guy, Greg? Oh, I'd love to be informed. Tell me the story of Prince Whipple. I mean, Prince Whipple was an African prince, and his parents sent him to uh, – he sent his brother to America – to learn, you know, all kind of like American knowledge. They had better schools here, or at least they thought. And the mm-hmm. brother came back and everything was fine. So then they sent Prince Whipple over as well with his cousin, and they were both captured, were, took into slavery, and Prince uh, Whipple lived his life as a slave for many years until getting his freedom from the Revolutionary War uh, yeah. as he fought I alongside story, George Washington. I didn't know his name. I know that story, but I did not know yeah. his name. Yeah, Prince yeah. Whipple. I mean, it's just amazing things that, you know, that you you, you, you give people that information, and, mm-hmm. and and it's like those stories that kind of carry on through generations to generations, mm-hmm. but without the inf- with missing pieces of that information, because had I had that kind of ammunition on the playground, right. I would have blew right. those little crackers out the fucking water. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When they well, said, no, you ain't, they said, you ain't royalty. You're <laughs> you from the ghettos of North Philly. <laughs> Everybody knows that. We can tell your ghetto by your leather sneakers. Your shoes are made of soft white leather. <laughs> We know the, your ghetto. That is the very narrative that the Brothers Network works diligently and consistently over the last 15 years to dismantle and debunk. We did not start in the ghetto. We did not start as enslaved people. Right. We started as free people, and there's so many of us. Yeah, we were enslaved. We weren't slaves. Well, we were kidnapped. We were, we were kidnapped. Yeah, we were kidnapped and, 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 and enslaved. And African women were, black women were raped. You know, we are in this Me Too movement, and we have to talk about in a very clear way that enslaved women who were kidnapped and raped were part of this Me Too movement. I mean, no, they were we, part of the Me One movement. I mean, they were that's first. Exactly right. 
That's right. I mean, wait, wait. Right. I mean, Greg, but you got to think about that. I mean, let's unpack that a little bit. And I'm glad you brought that up because it's such yeah. a serious, serious thing when we talk mm -hmm. about rape, right? So when you talk about somebody that's me too and somebody that was sexually assaulted, somebody mm -hmm. behind us? Repeated or somebody that was sexually repeated. assaulted uh, 30 years ago and then we take another person to court over that case, not saying that we shouldn't. I'm just saying what happened. Yeah, I saw that then, in the UK. Then maybe, in the UK, then that, maybe we should bring up some of these old rape cases. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, because there's was, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of right. African American product. women that were raped repeatedly for hundreds right. of years. So it's almost that's like right. it's almost like and, a and, we're and a rape clear, race. You know, when we say that, we want to be clear. We're talking about white males doing the raping, not yeah, black men. Yeah, of course, men. of course. I mean, right. we, that's that's but, implied. But some people are confused. Some people are confused. They believe that they, they will say, "Oh my God, the slaves were raping each other." Yeah, that's not the case. That's not the case. Were they raping that's each other on top of that soft cotton? <laughs> Fucking where the sensitive bastards. Where the sneaker was made from years later, from right. the leather and the cotton. But I, I, I'm, I'm smiling, but I want to say that you know we really have to look long and hard, and with it through through a lens of critical race theory, through a lens of critical race theory, whereby we explore the truth and what really happened. And one of those ways is to go back and look at uh, the number of black women and black women's bodies that were that were uh, that were violated, 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 violated. Not I mean, by black men, but by 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 white by, men. By the enslaver. By by uh, yeah, um, yeah. it's a it's a it's a right. genocide. And we talk about and we talk about this idea of reparations, and we have to be very careful because I mean, there's so um, many there's so many pathways to reparations. Like I mean, we could be getting I mean, all the times that blacks have been approximated in commercials. Every time you make a right. fucking Rice Krispie treat, sing a rap song, right. or you got a fucking Eminem slam dunking a, a, a fucking on LeBron right. James or some fucking shit. It's like, right. yeah, wait a That's minute, right. y'all. Hold the well, fucking I was, phone. I was, was going to say something else about um, identity and 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 citizen citizenship and personhood. Um, unfortunately, enslaved Africans who were former kings and also lawyers and doctors, when they came to America because they were kidnapped and brought in handcuffs and, and shackles to America, they lost their personhood. So they were considered property. We, my ancestors, were considered property. Right. So the crimes are really against property. And what we know in some cases when we talk about reparations, which is where we have to be very careful, um, some courts in some parts of the world have decided to say that the enslaved African is property and then award the reparations for loss to the owner of that property. Well, that happened in America. Mm-hmm. That happened in America. The slave owners of the South got reparations for mm -hmm. slaves that they lost because it was economic loss. It was like, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, bailout. Economic. Or, or what is it now? They call it stimulus. There was a slave <laughs> stimulus. They said, well, God damn it, I need my slave stem check, Lincoln. <laughs> and Lincoln gave out slave so, stimulus so we'll money. Yeah, and he wasn't going to let him free, neither. Like, he was like, he had to, he had, he had to, had to give up that money. Slave stimmy, stimmy check. They go mm -hmm. way back. The stimulus. Yeah, I, I want I want to be just be mindful that we we are it's a serious subject, and to think that you know my human body and your human body was considered property and not the full humanity of who we are, and this is where we're still fighting today and amplifying brilliant stories and brilliant narratives about brilliant black men, and also the travesty that happens along the way. You're a royalty one day, the next day you are an enslaved person. I mean, it is just so it's mind blowing. Tragic. It's it mind blowing. Is, you know, and, and, and to circle it back to COVID, I want all of us to be safe, take care of ourselves, because we have a lot of work to do, and we also have a lot great, lot more great stories to amplify about Black people and Black men in particular. Yeah, exactly. And and mo moving on, uh, we want to talk about the Olympics. I mean, what what do you think about uh, Simone Bill going in and going out? Uh, did did you, did you have any thoughts on that? Did you see any Olympics this week? Nothing but um, the basketball because I'm concerned about our USA team losing. Oh, they lost again. Uh, well, they know he lost two times when we last week. Oh, they lost twice last week. Yeah, but now I think they're winning now. They're in the semifinals. Okay, they're in the semifinals. Are they going against an African team? <laughs> <laughs> because Greg, I got to be clear about this. I've been doing some studies, and I, I have some. I, I have on. some bad news for African Americans. <laughs> Africans, real Africans are coming. Real Africans. Real Africans are coming. 
They're they're coming over to the United I think, States. I think the U.S. team is half African. They're, they're, they're playing sure. more. They got more Africans than they ever had, though. They used to just have a King Olajuwon. Now yeah, they got like, six, seven Olajuwon. Africans. They look at that. And, and look, here's the thing. That's where J. Cole went wrong. I mean, we talked about this, Greg, last week, but he uh-huh. went over there trying to, as an African American, trying to right. play ball with Africans. Yeah. Like, he must be yeah. out of his fucking mind. It's like, yo, so, so the Africans very, are just, they're better than Afri- they, they're Ameri- African Americans. They take offense to it. They're they, fucking better. They're more hungry, and that's a basketball term. They're, they're just more hungry. fucking better. They're you know what I'm hungry. saying? It's well, like, I, also, I also think that the African American athlete in general, so I'm going to head and, you know, you'll get some good listens and, and responses for this, is not as disciplined as some people, other parts of the world. Not all, but some are not as disciplined. I don't know that they're hungry, brother, but I know that there there's a level of discipline with uh, soccer players from the continent and other parts of the world. But we're not talking about football. Not, uh, we're talking about basketball. No, no, I know. And when I say hungry, that's when I mean, I don't mean hungry. I mean, that's a term for basketball I, I saying that you're I, I like, yeah, yeah. I know what it means. Okay, right. I know what it means. But he just said you got to be careful with the yeah, dialogue. I know, I know, I know. I, I get that. I'm just saying that. No, I'm just saying, I think that people from different ethnic groups around the world and folks from the continent in West Africa and in North Africa are, are very serious about what they're going to do and, and how they accomplish it. And they don't have the distractions of capitalism, right? I'll go ahead and say it. They don't have those distractions of capitalism. They want to do well. And then, you know what? They want to take care of their family, right? And they don't want to, they don't care about the big, the big car and the big house and all these other things that sometimes African-Americans are uh, more concerned with as athletes. You know, I hear these African-American athletes say the first thing I want to do is, you know, and then they don't do it. You know, they spend a lot of money on, on commercial commercial products and capitalism. So yeah, the motivation yeah. is also different. And, and, you know, you know, and I think that that leads back to also having that that non-participation factor into American society or, 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 or finally feeling like you can participate but not really knowing what that is. I mean, even Tyler, the creator, said something interesting. He said when he, when he won an award, he didn't know how to celebrate. Oh, that's heartbreaking. You know, he was like, damn, like, I won an award. He's like, I, I just bought another car. He said, I didn't, I didn't know what the fuck to do with myself. Mm-hmm. And that is the very interesting thing. It's like, okay, how do you relieve some of this, uh, I guess is, um, I don't even know what to fucking call it. I mean, it's, it's uh, baggage, you know, psycholo- yeah, psychological it. baggage that's that you're just exactly carrying around that yeah. you basically, that's, that's self-programmed. But then also, I mean, I guess it has some kind of society has some part of it, but I guess it's the perspective of how you look at the world. That's right. And then right. your worldview. Your worldview. Yeah. View. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when it comes down to that, it's like, okay, what's important to me in the world? And then to not know what's important or not know how to celebrate um, is, is, is definitely profound. when you suffer success. I mean, that's a real bad problem. Because if you fail, if you fuck up, then like, and you feel bad about it. It's like, yeah, all right, cool, you fucked up. But then when you like, you killing it, and you still like lost, then I mean that's like a tragedy. You know? The people around you have not taught or talked to you about it. They haven't seen you. Haven't seen success. You well, don't most know people don't know what the fuck to say, especially in those kind of situations, Greg. <laughs> and especially when you like got one famous motherfucker or two famous motherfuckers and then you got a bunch of other friends who you guys are real friends but you don't they don't really want to say anything in in particular to jeopardize their relationship so they sometimes those things just get out of people that you do crazy shit like i would almost like uh equate um and even to the defense of the, the baby again um that when you're a celebrity and you start off at a young age whatever right. it's like being locked up that's Whatever right. age you get locked right. up at, when you get arrested and you get incarcerated, that's right. You kind of stay that age, mm-hmm. and as an entertainer, whatever age you become famous or you start making a successful career in the entertainment industry, I think they people just get locked in that time frame in that bubble. And certainly, that's certainly that's a perfect example. Uh, is, is Michael Jackson right? I mean, he was a very there young, you when go. He became very famous, and then there you it was go. Hard for to move beyond that uh, childlike state, even though he was doing some other things. I think it was very difficult for him. I, I do think what you're saying is very important. I want to underscore it, that that environment that you're in and your homeboys, your boys don't want to say anything that's counter to you. And I think that gets us back to the COVID conversation, quite frankly. Right. There are a number of people who want to wear masks, but they don't because they th- are worried about what, I'll go ahead and say it, their mother might say. They oh, want to wow. get the vaccination, but they worry about what their mother might say. I have a neighbor who said he wasn't going to get vaccinated because his mother told him to. 
he's uh he's doing an internship and he's a his college mother student. told him to get vaccinated or not to get vaccinated told him not to get vaccinated oh so he's listening he's honoring thy mother and i said to say you know brother okay. I, your mother's wrong i had to say it like your mother's <laughs> wrong your mother's wrong well Dr- greg you're intellectual you, you know you don't get you don't get into the people things about people's mothers you don't want to hear that stupid gibberish that fucking nonsense it's like listen man get the medicine your mother's a moron. You know I, don't know, you I know you didn't say your mother's a moron because you got more class than that. But it's more funny if I say that on on a podcast. Your mother's a complete moron. Get the vaccination, you fool. What do you mean? Then this is a person who's going out into society and community and taking public transportation, doing all these things. Yeah. Oh, he's riding the bus. Okay. Not not only not vaccinated, but also not wearing a mask. And so he's so he's he's yeah. catching it. He's transmitting it, re-catching right. it. Transmitting right. it again, coming out That's of right. it, catching it, then retransmitting it again. That's right. So he's That's a right. fucking super spreader. We got to take him out. <laughs> we got to take he him double, out. He a double he's agent. Go. He a double agent. He got to pick a side. He's got to pick a and side. It goes, and, it goes back, and it goes back to now I'm back at HIV. You know, we, we didn't take out, we didn't demonize women or female sex workers, right? We didn't say anything about them. Most men were not on the DL. They were engaging in extramarital sex with a sex worker. Right, mm-hmm. but the and, thing about it is, there's an old joke. That's the story that doesn't get told. Yeah, there's an old joke though about that though, and everybody knows. They say this is a, a, a father and son. They said, when a when a man sleeps with a prostitute, he must put something over his, you know, his gun. thing to protect him, right? Mm-hmm. Protection. But between father and son, there could be no separation. It's an old funny joke, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I, I didn't get that joke, but uh, I, I'm trying to process it, it now. It's I don't a, know it's if it's an old, it's an old people. I'm feel uncomfortable, dice. I'm leaving. Same I'm joking. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Well, I mean, there's another hot button about that, which is why I brought that up because there was 42 Doug. There was a very controversial video that he put up, and Greg, you just gave a good point. And what was what were you saying? I was simply saying that, you know, we can see a video, but that's a slice, and we don't know really what happened before or after, but more importantly, we don't know how the participants in that video feel or respond to that or what's appropriate for them or what they feel, what their boundaries are, you know? Um, and we just don't know that. Yeah, should we you know? care? But should we care? I, I want people to be safe, and I want people to be healthy, and I want them to have strong, good, healthy relationships with their parents or adults right. and vice versa. You I, know, think, I think um, if your father licks your neck, I think you got a great relationship with him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but is it is it appropriate? You know, I don't I don't is know what's appropriate? appropriate in this fucking world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I do. Let me just be clear. I know what's appropriate, and that's okay. outside of the bounds of appropriateness. I know what's appropriate. Okay, and so you okay, not, so you say that that's inappropriate. Okay, but and, if some house holds, have a video, it's pretty to have a video about it, right? Well, he tweeted it. He tweeted it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was him. He shot the video, yeah. and then he tweeted it from his own Twitter page. Yeah. And was the son embarrassed? Was the son happy? Was the son did things wrong with it? Yeah, his son was like, yeah, daddy, daddy, lick away. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he was like three years old. Yeah, his son, the son doesn't know any fucking better. But now his son... How old is the son? How old is the child? Like well, two or three years old. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was a little weird. For me, it was a little weird, but... Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know what goes on in some people's houses, yeah. so I, I let it go. You know, 42 any... Doug is a real guy. He's like a real thug guy, right? So I, you know, I don't want to say anything bad about it. He'll fucking shoot me or some shit. So yeah. Well, uh, let me just say this, Stace. Earlier in this segment, you said that there was a sexual act named after you. There's a right, right, there's right. A knife draw. It's not the same it's one. Not it's named this one, is after it? me. <laughs> okay. It's, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a generational thing that just I this see. generation has come up with something called dice raw. And I actually think that it's like, um, it's like, uh, it's foreign. So they, mm-hmm. they, it's like in another country. Like I see a lot of Japanese. Yeah. Retweets does, it, does, with, it, does it involve licking or no? <laughs> I have no idea. Come on, you got it. It definitely, that definitely doesn't involve licking licking your your child. <laughs> I just said licking in general. I just said licking in general. No, I just want to be. Clear. I don't know what it is. I think it's like. Uh-huh. I think it's just like a. I don't know what the fuck it is. I got to find out. But I haven't really got a chance to talk to, to anybody yeah. from that generation that could be like, oh yeah, that that uses that term. You know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. But it, but yeah, it's pretty but funny. Make sure it's not like anything else that we just described in the last couple of minutes, because that would be that would be really interesting. Yeah, that'd be really yeah. interesting. Yeah. But, but in I, other I in other news, yeah, in other news though, but we're trying to figure out why it is news. Is Barack Obama's having a birthday party this weekend, and um, the CNN is in uproar, 
and they, he's coming under a lot of criticism for having a party during the Delta variant spread. What, what, what's your thoughts on that, D? I mean, I think. You, oh, sorry, not my yeah, turn. Yeah. Well, I just think that we got a lot of festivals going on right now with 180,000 people gathering to watch a concert, and they're not social distance, distancing. They may not have, um, you know, COVID-19 because I'm probably sure they do. They got to have it for all those many people. And then you have places like Florida and Las Vegas where it's a, it's a melting pot of just a bunch of people coming in from different places not wearing a mask. So, eh. But, I mean, it's only a party with, like, a couple hundred people. I, I, I mean, do yeah, you think th that it should be news? No, I don't think. It, my, my point is, like, that's my whole point, saying all the other things that, no, this should not be news. This is on 29 acres. And it's not even. It don't make no sense. It's, it's only it's less than five hundred, three hundred. But anyway, people. Greg, give me give me your thoughts, Greg, on why it's news. First, first, I love Barack Obama. I love President Barack Obama. I think the work he does is incredible. I think right. the Obama Foundation is incredible. And I think if Barack Obama wants to have a party, he can have a party. If 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 he wants to have a party, he can have a party. I also think that the there's a hyper focus on what black men do black men in leadership and there's always an opportunity for the press to come in and demean that or demoralize it or say it's unethical in some strange way because that's what the press is about in some instances right and, and that's what i was heading so, towards right exactly yeah you know i mean I, I don't know i think oprah does a really good job of being quiet and mm. uh, maybe mr and mrs obama will continue to learn from oprah about how to be quiet and invisible to the larger press, and maybe because she's a member of the press, but you just have to operate, you know, on the DL with your stuff. Otherwise, people will take an opportunity to 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 make fun of you or point you out or yeah. say something derogatory. Exactly. About there, there you have it. And Biden yeah. actually made a comment today and said he he won't be attending the party. <laughs> if Biden's not going, I'm available. Let's just say this. I'm I, available. I would, I would double down and say Biden wasn't invited. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, was, you got to at least be able to two step, and he got one. We got two bad wills. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, because you know the the the, the Obamas are definitely going to be in there dancing, so you don't want anything bad to happen yeah. to him. I, I gotta get him a boat to boot. But I, but I'm I'm curious to know that why he thought it was necessary to actually announce that he would not be attending publicly. Oh, did he do well, that? He, he succumbed. He succumbed to the pressure because he wants to do the right thing, and he's very very as any leader is very conscious about how you're perceived because you don't want to be in this position where someone says, "Well, you went to that party, and now you're telling us that we have to go into lockdown." So I think that. He, he made a public statement. He may or may not be going to the party. Right. But you know what? Happy birthday, Barack Obama. Happy birthday, Barack Obama. 6-0. It's the actually big six tomorrow. It's December. It's, yeah, his birthday is actually the 5th. You the know what I mean? Oh, it's the 4th. The 4th. Anyway, okay. I don't know when this is going to air. So, My aunt's but, birthday is the 5th. I'm trying to take her to dinner. Yeah. Right. So anyway, there, there's something else we wanted to talk about, too. Um What was we going to talk about? The mayor, oh, the governor of uh, New York. Oh, New York. Cuomo, oh man, Cuomo, he was in the runnings. White guys, you had one, you had yeah, one in the running. Make, he, he was going to go far, man. Yeah, yeah. He was going to go People far. People have been trying to get him out of that position for the last. I mean, he was about to, be, he year. was going to run for president. Yeah. He was going to run for president, he, but he, now he, he's fucked. He, he's not running for president. Greg, have you no, heard about this? No. No pun intended. No pun intended. He's fucked. He, no yeah, pun intended. Thank you. Thank he, you. I no, agree. He's fucked. And no he's, he's fucked a lot, apparently. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> apparently, no, Cuomo but, no, no, let, let, likes to get his stick wet. Now, first of all, this is not sexual. Uh, this is sexual harassment. Oh, this so is he, sexual harassment. So he, he, he hasn't he hasn't did any. He hasn't oh, okay, okay, physically. Okay. Okay. Well, one okay. woman said he traced the letters on his shirt. And now it's like, that's weird. But anyway, yeah, I, I think that the proclivities of people who are in leadership and in positions of power vary. And I also think because they have boundless, unboundless power during the course of the day, that may sneak over into their other activities and they may not have good social skills to be able to negotiate sex or an opportunity to date. I certainly think that is throughout, you know, we could look at any white male, Donald Trump, and see that there is some strangeness and non traditional things that they have engaged in in there or things they've said exactly um, and I think that that comes with this idea of maybe not be, having really good social skills well that's what right? he kind of said during his little rebuttal he I'm, said, not, I'm not excusing anything he did i'm simply saying that he doesn't have good social skills and he also doesn't understand no he doesn't he doesn't he, and he, and he tried to point. use his cultural since he's italian like uh we mm -hmm. kiss hands we kiss faces uh, <laughs> uh i say sweetheart and he, like 
I yeah. mean, Italians do like to no, kiss. No, no, I do. I know that. Very I'm just saying. Thing in other cultures, they but kiss you don't a lot. do that at work. Mm-hmm. Now, you, you do you that with your family. You don't do that at work. Like, you don't, you don't do that at work. You don't do that at work. But, 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 but that's what he used as his. Like he, he he said that. Like that's his rebuttal. He doubled down and said these these allegations was not true. Could you do that if you was black at work? When it's like, yo, why the fuck you coming late? You be like, yo, I'm black. It's my culture. I don't I don't come in on time. They was like, well, why the fuck did you get in a the fight? They be like, well, you, I'm black. You know, I felt disrespected. You know, yeah, like, I, I can say that that uh, the behavior of males, white males in, in this country and really around the world, who don't aren't able to properly separate their work from their personal stems back to what we saw with enslaved Africans and white males who were um, kidnapping black bodies from the continent and also sexually abusing them. Greg, and you're so making my podcast really hard to be funny this week. Okay, okay, okay. It's like <laughs> Debbie Downer, Greg Walker. <laughs> bah, bah. He's well, going to talk about the rights that black people not, have been not, denied. Not, not Debbie Downer, Don Downer, Don Downer. Yeah, Don okay, Downer, yeah, Don the Downer. Down. Down. I'm, I'm just fucking with you, man. Yeah. You know, I, I, love the, I love to stick it to the white man anytime I can. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because the white man's had one hell of a run. He knows it. He knows it. Yeah. He's well, had a hell of a male, run. I do think that the white male, it should be funny, is, is in crisis, and the white male is in crisis in ways that he has he, never he's been He's fine. Before. The white male's not in crisis. The white male's fine. Even in crisis, he's doing better than us fuckers. You know, listen, yeah. listen, yeah. white but, man, you're not going to get any tears out of me. I'll tell you that much. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cry a river for any white men. Like, you know, it's fucked up. I feel bad here. too because I, you know, I, I, I'm racist with my my uh, my when I give the homeless people. I only give. I don't give to any able-bodied white man. Is that fucked up? Because oh I'm like, all you got to do is go down to the bank and apply for a loan. No, and oh bam. my god! Here yeah. you go, pal. Don't you know how to work? The banking system works. You're a white male. Just go down there and apply. Get the loan. You don't even That's have right. to show yeah. ID. You know what I mean? I, I, I would argue. I would argue that for your listeners, I would argue that I think I might have a permanent place here because I add a little bit of levity to very serious conversations, but I also add a perspective. No, I is, think he was great for the show. Actually, as yeah, a great. This is, this is I feel like you know you and Dice, you know, you know. Uh, I think that's exactly what you need. You need somebody to keep it on point. That you need somebody it's, just, you know. Yeah, it's a both hand. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. I don't need shit. No, I mean, <laughs> I don't think, what kind of producer is this guy? Tell me hey, what I need. Hey, hey, you, 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 you need a voice of conscience. I don't need. I don't need a goddamn need a conscience, thing. You know what I mean? Because you will go off the the radar. Will I? Yes. Well, I did. Yes. Thanks a lot, pal. He didn't pal. even see the radar. He didn't even Thanks see the radar. Pal. You got me, Gregory Walker. That's a good interview, D. But now I'm still waiting for President Chi. <laughs> yeah, you, President Chi. I'm, I'm still working on that. I'm still working on President Chi. And, you know, he has to get a clearance. And, you know, he can't be COVID uh, positive when he come over here. She never had it. Hey. He never had it. It was never in China. It was a lie. Okay. It's Fauci started it. Anyway, I think, I think, look, Greg. Fauci. Listen, Fauci. Get it. Listen, Greg, thank you for coming. I just it want you to shout budget. out your network again, Greg. Thebrothersnetwork.art is our website, www.thebrothersnetwork.art. You can find us on Instagram at The Brothers Network on Instagram. Those are the best two places to find us. You can find us also uh, on Twitter at The Bronet. But we look forward to hearing this podcast um, and sharing it widely with our listeners, uh, not only here in Philadelphia, but around the country and around the world. Got it. Thanks, Greg, for joining us, man. It's my pleasure. All right, this is The Raw Report. I'm Dice Raw, producer D, joining me. Bomb, you know what to do.